Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another another edition of the show. So I'm sure I have had a lower third the last episode. I pulled out my little handy dandy um, portable recorder. It's working now. I pulled it out at the end of the show and it doesn't show it was recording, but I know I hit the record button. I thought I saw it start recording. I put it in my pocket, so maybe I accidentally hit the record button again, which I can't remember ever doing on any other show. I know there's been times I thought I hit the button. And I know I didn't. But anyway, so sorry the audio isn't its normal quality like it is right now. Um, however, hopefully I did some fancy editing and was able to make it sound a little bit better. Uh, camera audio always sucks, but hey, it's always the backup in case something stupid happens. All right, so uh, as you see, we're again uh, one wine today. Um, I usually try to have the uh, episode title figured out ahead of time, but this one I don't know what I'm going to call it because um, there isn't anything I think I can get creative with the name on this one. So uh, let's just get right into it. Um, this is the 2013 uh, Conte Emo Cap Capo de Lista La Montechia Pinot Bianco. I don't really have anything I can get. I want to say the wine from La, Man La, Ma La Mancha, whatever. La Mantachia, as in like man from La Mancha. But that was kind of a stretch. And anyway, I, that's probably the one I'm going to call this episode. So, um, Pino Bianco. So, I got this uh, at $18 from Underground Cellar. It was one of those deals. Um, I can't remember what other wine I got, but this was the entry level wine. I paid $18. It was worth 18, so there was no like deal for uh, buying this wine, so I didn't get like some $30 wine for $18. Oops, there we go. There's something wrong. All right. So let's check this out. So this is another one of those wineries. I don't have a whole lot on. Um, It's just all only thing I'm interested about this wine is that it's been under the same family ownership since the Middle Ages, and they were more viticulturalists, they're, they're farmers, um, than winemakers until I guess somewhat more recently. Um, the Coli uh, Ejuane, Eugene, 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 I don't know. Uh, DOC was established in 18, 1969. That's what this is part of. It's a Pinot Bianco DOC. And this is in the south central part of Veneto near Padua. If you know where that is from your Shakespearean studies in high school or college. Um, and Pinot Bianco is, uh, well, in, in this part of, of Italy, Pinot Bianco is one of many... Uh, grapes grown. Uh, however, this particular DOC is a Pinot Bianco DOC, if I remember correctly. Um, so, what the? It's kind of looks like there's a little bit of. You know what? We haven't gotten that far yet. So, as we've done in the past, we're going to try. Oh, you know what? When I said 10 seconds left, I actually had 20 seconds left because the watch only allows you to do minutes and hours. So I had 20 seconds left, so I probably would have been able to get through the initial and final conclusion on that last wine. All right, so let's go through this wine also. All right, this wine is a white wine. Um, no evidence of any sediment. However, there's a slight bit of uh, effervescence uh, evident in the wine. Um, it is of a... Uh, 
moderate intense yellow color uh, with uh, a watery rim. Now that one, I think I actually see uh, cork, bits of cork in there. Viscosity is, we'll call it medium. No extraction and staining. It is bright and clear. On the nose, it is of medium minus intensity. It is clean, no evidence of any faults. It is youthful. Duh, it's 2013. Um, like I said, it's very mo medium minus on the intensity. I get just a lemon, lemon quality, lemon zest, rather than the lemon fruit, lemon rind, lemon zest. Lemon rind, lemon zest, I mean, I, it's, it's nothing else. Nothing floral, no evidence of wood, and no earthiness, mineral, or, you know, and no minerality, organic or, organic or otherwise. This wine is bone dry, uh, no tannin. Acid is high, very tart. Um, medium minus on the body. Uh, fruit uh, palate confirms the nose. It's loads of uh, lemon, tart lemon. Wet rock. Like wet rock on with lemon juice just on it. No evidence of any wood. It is high acid, so it's not completely in balance. However, there's nothing else there. Um, it is of medium, uh, medium, moderate, medium plus, whatever, finish. Um, it is medium in the complexity. It is of a normal quality, I would say ordinary quality producer. I still have a minute and 20 seconds left. Um, so I would, if I stopped right there, if I, I would say these are the possible varietals are Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, and then I would eliminate Pinot Gris. Um, I would eliminate Sauvignon Blanc um, because it doesn't have, I, I would say this is, you know, either old world, new world based upon whatever. Um, but my, my feeling would be this was a Pinot Grigio, so my analysis would, would tend to uh, support that it was a Pinot Grigio, and that's what I would call it. Um, now, I am in the right area of Italy for Pinot Grigio to exist um, for, for where this Pinot Bianco is. Um, it's got a much more yellow color to it than I'm used to with uh, Pinot Grigio. So that might be an indicator is Pinot Bianco, but this is not a testable wine. Just like the Gruner, which I don't remember if that's correct or not, the Gruner. Where's my phone? Here it is. That's what I meant to do. Look up the, whoa, geez. Everyone's liking my Instagram. You know, I'm on Instagram, 1337 wine. Duh. Um, let's go over here. Good Lord, how many things I got open? I think that's my watch vibrating. Here we go. So, yeah, 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 dismiss. White wines, Gruner might be. Yeah, Gruner is, but only from Austria. But this, as far as I know, is not. So let's look on the list again, make sure it's not. Nope. Just Pinot Grigio, not Pinot Bianco. So not a not, not something I would expect to see unless they change the rules this year for advanced. That is the advanced list I'm looking at. But that's from 2015. Now, how's the wine? It's good wine. Kind of like the last wine. Pleasant. It's got a little bit, a little bit more body to it, but it's, but it doesn't have much more. Doesn't have like anything extra in the flavor profile. It's an $18 bottle of wine. Um, the difference between this wine and the last wine is this wine has been sitting in my wine fridge for um, 
you know, forever, not forever, but for quite a while. So it was, I pulled it out around 55, 56 degrees, whereas the Gruner I pulled out at refrigerator temperature, but it had enough time for it to warm up so that uh, when I was going to um, taste it, it wasn't gonna be too, too terribly cold. This is, you know, not too terribly cold. It's a good temperature. I mean, it's probably a little bit warmer than ideal serving temperature for a white wine. Well, I'll be honest, I'd probably, if I had to choose between the two wines, this one's really tart. So to drink a wine by itself, I wouldn't do this. However, this with food, again, we know I'm not, I'm not a seafood guy, but, um, you know, light, some light uh, appetizers, prosciutto wrapped wrap mozzarella, uh, salads, um, maybe some uh, salty, uh, maybe some um, savory or salty, um, whatchamacallits, snacks. Um, nothing too heavy though, you know, but maybe some lightly, lightly salted potato chips, maybe some, I don't know about pretzels, but. Um, and going to go, go some cheeses, some salty cheeses or just nice, nice, um, nice white cheeses. Uh, that would, that would be what I would do with it. I probably wouldn't do the, um, the, the fruit salad as much as the, as the, um, Gruner. Just cause this is super, super acidic. But all in all, it's not bad wine. You want to try try Pinot Bianco? I've never been impressed by Pinot Biancos. They're very much like Pinot Grigio. I confuse them very easily. This one does have a little bit of fizz to it, so I'm a little bit curious about that. So probably in the in the process, it got a little CO2 in there. But that might be that might be. Uh, I didn't get any prickliness from. I don't feel any like effervescence, but that might also be causing me to think it's super acidic. Maybe there's that little bit of effervescence is giving you a little prickly, you know, on the tongue. It's not a bad wine, it's 18 bucks. I'd probably be happier with the $9 Gruner Veltliner um, if I was pressed for, you know, pressed for just a uh, wine to drink on its own, but put the right food with it, it would be good. All right, so um, that's gonna do it for this episode. Man, they're kind of going somewhat fast. Um, as always, uh, leave comments down below, either at the website or on YouTube or wherever. Um, hit the donate button over here to send me some ducats to uh, buy some more wines. Uh, friend me up above. Leave me great uh, five-star ratings on iTunes. And uh, tell your friends about it. I think I already said that. All right. Thank you once again. And we'll see everyone again next time.